Now, with those floors in there, let's talk about how we can uh, start actually doing sort of more conventional modeling. The idea is as follows. When you're going through and modeling, the most critical rule is just placing the elements on the level that's going to host those elements. So if you want things on level two, open up a level two floor plan view. If you want a level one, put it on level one. And that's kind of OK. We'll tend to put things on one floor level. We can always align things vertically between floor levels, but we're going to talk about copying and pasting to get things aligned between the floor levels. It's kind of a really kind of good, quick way of doing that. So let's show you what that looks like. So I'm hanging around down here on level one, phase two. Here's the bottom of my building. Got a floor underneath it there. I'm going to put some things on this floor level. So I could go through and I'll put some walls in there. I'll put some sort of wall on the back of the building. That'd be a good thing. <coughs> and now I'll start putting uh, some interior walls in there and some doors. So I'll put that in there. I'll put another wall in here. Why is that one all blue? We'll put some doors in. Something a little more modest. maybe even some windows. So this is all just sort of very standard modeling, right? Got one in and one out. Let me flip that one. I don't think I flipped it. So I've created some basic offices. I can even put desks in there and things like that. The idea is quite often what will happen is I'll want to take these sort of <coughs> elements and I'll want to copy them up to level two. I want to sort of have things happening at level two that are approximately the same oh, size and shape. Actually, I should have been paying attention over here as I was placing these things. Let's see. Now, I actually want to bring those down just from level one to level two as opposed to unconnected. In fact, even in here, let me grab these. And I'm going to want to, again, make those go up a little bit. Those look like they're already good. Okay, let's go up to level two. Level two, we're looking at kind of a big blank slate. What I would like to do is actually have things on level two sort of line up with what happens. Very often, if you think about buildings, the corridors line up, the office interior walls line up, things like that. They don't have to, but often they do things like that. And if we want to do something like that, here's how we can control it. For the view, there's a view property called the underlay, which I have turned on right now. So level two is looking down at level one as an underlay. So level one's a ghost, and we can see it underneath there, and we can use it to help align things. So as I go through on level two, if I want to make sure that my walls are lining up with level one, with the underlay turned on, I can just go through and by doing wall center lines, let me make sure I actually get to the wall center line right on there, pull this wall out on level two, and that's actually just right above level one. Kay. Now we could even go through and do something where we lock it to level one, but I don't usually do it that far. But I'm trying to draw things just sort of right on top of each other. Same thing over here. If I want to have that one line up, I can try and line it up and do it like that. Okay, And that's okay. Underlay is your first line of defense in terms of trying to make sure things are lining up from floor level to floor level. There are some things where you do want to make sure they line up. Oh, walls at the sides of stairways and things like that, it really is critical. But for these partition walls in between the offices, that isn't so critical. Like the walls up on the second floor, unless there's some structural purpose to it, you know, could be out of sync with each other. I could have things that are sort of two modules wide or one and a half modules wide. 
There's nothing that says it has to line up. Okay, but if you do want to have things line up between the different floors, let me show you a really good technique for doing that. And that's called copying and pasting a line. So here's how copying and pasting a line works. I'll come over here and I'm level one of phase two. I got some walls and some windows and some doors there. I would love to have those walls, doors, and windows show up on level two. In fact, let's put them up on level three while we're at it and kind of just build the whole side of the building. That's a real common way of doing that. A lot of buildings sort of get constructed, at least as a starting point this way. You could always change level two and level three to be a little bit different. But if you want to start out this way, let's go for it. Okay, how you can do that is as follows. I could select any of those elements individually, but watch this technique. I'll just drag to grab them all. Okay. Then if I've dragged to create those all, what do I want to do? I want to basically copy and paste them up. I think for these, what I need to do is filter it just <coughs> a little bit, because I don't actually want to get the tags. I want to get the actual building elements, the doors, the walls, and the windows. So let's grab those, say OK. Now, to get those up to the other level, what I need to do is, where did it go? I want to copy to my clipboard. Did I have a copy of the clipboard? I don't think I did. Is it in the other one? A multi-select? It's over there. There it is. Copy to the clipboard. Thank you. Distinguished from that copy, copy to the clipboard. And then I can say, paste the lines to some other levels. And I can choose, I'd like to put that on level two and level three. <coughs> and if I choose that and say OK, watch what happens. On level two now, I have a duplicate. And on level three, I have a duplicate of those, although it's kind of on the back of the building. There we go, on that side. So the nice thing about copying and pasting a line, let me kind of show it to you in the 3D view instead. Zoom on in there. There's copy and paste aligned. We're kind of looking pretty good there. You watch this. If I do the same sort of thing now, I go back to modify and I say paste the line, that same thing, because it's still on the clipboard, and I put it up on the roof level too, it'll copy it right up there. So copy and paste aligned, a very good friend of yours for just getting things up and down between the different levels. Okay, and it does a pretty good job of starting with all that stuff. If it turns out on a specific level you want to get rid of something, no problem. Go ahead and edit it on that floor level. Every floor level is going to be able to operate independently. Okay, so very hugely helpful. What you're going to find is that in trying to do your th uh, little multi-story building with 30 offices, You'll probably design one floor that has like 10 offices on it and do some copying and pasting. Because really, for this level, you don't need to think about each of the 30 offices independently and design them. It's really more you're creating workspaces that you can kind of subdivide up and kind of deal with. Okay, that's kind of it in terms of where we wanted to go, just getting you started with multi story modeling. It's really okay, conceptual mass. Figure out the floor area is doing that, model the elements, copy and paste them aligned. Kind of generally feel okay about that as a way to get started? Okay. Let me show you one last little variation on something <coughs> that I want to just kind of let you know about regarding these sort of like mass surfaces. And it has to do with how you deal with just modeling these uh, what I'll call complex surfaces. And it's just sort of a specific framework you need to kind of like uh, have it available. And here's the basic issue. As we go through and we create different surfaces, it's quite easy to kind of create surfaces of different shapes. We can create sort of big volumes. We can create just sort of barrel arches and surfaces. That's all OK. The hard part is, at the tail end of that, it's doing something called rationalizing the surface. And that's to sort of divide it up along some grid system that will actually make it make sense. OK, it's a little bit hard. So let me kind of see if I can show you an example and like uh, get you motivated about what I mean. I'll just create a new project. Okay. And I'm going to create just uh, some tweaky mass, something that just sort of has some funny shape to it. So I'll say under massing. And again, I could do this either as an in place mass if I only want to do it here. I can do it as a conceptual mass if I want to reuse it several places. 
as a separate family. I'm just going to do an in place one. And for this, let me go ahead and just draw something. I'm going to create a form out of it. So far, so good. Zoom on out. I will choose that upper surface and pull that up. Oops, I actually got the line there, which is probably not too bad for what I want to do. Okay, but now let me start giving it sort of a more oh, complex shape. I'll pull this out. Let me grab this guy over here. If I can grab the line. Can I get it? Oh, I did get it right there. I'll pull that up. And I'll pull this one out. And that's actually starting to get to be a very distorted form. It's hard to kind of tell exactly what's going on there. Let me finish the math. If we orbit that around a little bit, you'll see it's it's got kind of an interesting shape there. And where this gets to be interesting in particular is when you go through and try to apply, for example, a curtain surface to that. Squeeze that. Actually, it won't even let me do it that way because it seems to know that I can't really do it that way. I'm going to try editing this. Hang on. It's not going to let me do it that way. Okay, some different things that you can sort of play around with. X-ray mode is something that lets you see all the different dots that actually define the shape really easily. <coughs> so if you turn on X-ray mode, you can actually grab those dots nicely and uh, start pulling those points around and doing what you want to. And that's getting to be a sort of a very weird roof form right now. Okay, so we can go through and do things like that. If the shape is relatively similar, there's a lower profile and there's an upper profile, I can add profiles to it, okay, which will then give me even sort of more control because every each of the different profiles can be twisted and distorted. So I can start doing things like bowing that out. Okay. And as you do things like this, the problem is really at the end of the whole process, if we have to sort of actually apply that as some sort of curtain panel or some sort of system, it's really pretty hard to do that because that's not going to break down into a lot of rectangular panels very easily. Okay, so what do you do? In the mass, there's this whole way of dealing with it. Let me edit this in place. Okay, and choose that surface. We can go ahead and do something called dividing the surface. And dividing the surface really just applies some sort of a grid system to it. Let me actually turn off x-ray mode because that's going to bother us right now. So I want to see the surface. What it's actually doing is applying a grid actually conforming to the precise shape. So as opposed to being a bunch of rectangular panels, be these are panels that are actually sort of twisting and bending like how like this. For, for people who are like, uh, familiar with uh, a project we worked on last year, <laughs> yeah, it's bending and twisting and conforming to a shape right now. Okay? And it's going to follow that shape precisely. For example, on this one, I can divide that surface, okay? and that will sort of divide it up that way. Now with these, we could go ahead and control the amount of division. We can control the u direction, the horizontal direction, and the v direction if we want to. But at a high level, what we do is we can choose that surface, and we can apply a pattern to it. Now, patterns don't have to be rectangular. We can put rectangular panels on there, but you will often see things that are more hexagons or triangles or different sorts of grid systems that are unusual shapes as we try to rationalize a surface like that. Because it's hard to sort of make it out of strictly rectangular surfaces. So for example, if I like the whole idea of doing triangular shapes, I can choose that pattern. Okay. And what it's doing is just mapping that pattern to the grid. 
okay? But all the different individual panels there are actually custom sized and custom shaped to actually conform to that. But if we want to try and take something like that and make it into a panelized system, we actually have to break it up into something like that. And then we can even go through and load a curtain panel. And I'll load the triangular one. Let me even do the checkerboard surface. Now I'm going to do the triangle. Let's leave it at that. <coughs> and say that for this triangular pattern, I want to populate it with triangular panels. As though we're creating sort of a very regular pattern here, we can go ahead and adjust any of the panels. Let me go ahead and show you now. There are a bunch of individual panels here. And we can choose any individual panel. We can choose it from a glazed panel to a solid panel, or we'll create some different types of panels. So for example, if we wanted a special material or different colors or things going on, just sort of breaking up that system to kind of make it a little bit uh, more interesting. But that's this whole thing about ra uh, kind of complex shapes. Just real briefly, what happens is when you get done with the mass, let me finish that, and we turn off the mass so you're not viewing it anymore. Hang on, let me look at visibility graphics. It must be turned on there. There it is. You see, all that's left is the actual surface. You don't actually see the mass. Okay. So again, if that's getting really, really weird and esoteric, don't worry about it. You don't need to be going there for your assignment. But if you are starting to come up with complex shapes and you've done something interesting, be aware that we may have to help you divide it up into a different, uh, rationalize it into a pattern that's a little bit different than just rectangular panels to really get the surfaces to apply nicely to it. So again. If that sounds weird, don't go there. If that sounds interesting and intriguing, go there, but like be willing to go out and get some help to with, you with that, because it does get sort of tricky when you head down that path. Okay? Beautiful. Let us adjourn for today. When we come back on Thursday, we'll look at oh, design options and phases and all that type stuff, and uh, really keep pushing along the dimension of helping you go on with this assignment.